Welcome to Heavenly News tonight. It's so good to be with you here. And thank you for those of you who are tuning in via Facebook. Good evening, Jessica. Good to see you. Doris, Jan, all of you. I'm so glad you're here tonight. And tonight we will be in part two of the Holy Spirit, or session two, as you would call it. And it's going to be so fascinating. It's such a fascinating part of Scripture that no one, um, you hardly ever hear preached. You hardly ever hear taught on. And that would be in Exodus 31. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. If you have your devices, you can turn to Exodus 31. That's where we, we will be in Exodus most of the time. Because it's a fascinating piece of scripture. Exodus 31 and Exodus 35 and Exodus 36. Where we will see that it's so interesting. The first time, we will see the first time that God fills someone with his spirit in scripture. So today's, le today's lesson is going to be a breath of fresh air. The Holy Spirit can come in lots of ways. The Holy Spirit could come upon us and bring a thrilling to us. A filling that comes with the thrilling. Somebody needs to say amen to that. A filling that comes with the thrilling. Hallelujah, Jesus. So we are going to land in on the first time in the scriptures that an individual by name has something happened to him called the filling of the Spirit. Exodus 31, verses 1 through 6. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and have filled him with the Spirit of God. Remember that. God says, I've, I'm call, I've called him by name, Bezalel, and I am, I am filling him with the Spirit of God, first time in Scripture, with ability and intelligence and with knowledge and all craftsmanship to devise artistic designs. You need to remember that phrase, to devise artistic designs to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood to work in every craft. And behold, I have appointed with him Aholahab, the son of uh, Ishamak, of the tribe of Dan. And I have given to all able men ability that they may make all that I have commanded you. Isn't that fascinating? That is so fascinating. Hello, Rui, good to see you. The first time, he is telling it to Moses. This is the first time he's telling it to Moses. All right. Going to Exodus 35. Exodus 35. Exodus 35. And here, he's, God, is, God is giving Moses instructions for the tabernacle. Exodus 35. Verses 30 through 35, all the way to Chapter 36, verses 1 and 2. Then Moses said to the people of Israel, See, the Lord is called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship to devise artistic designs. There's that phrase again. To work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood for work in every skilled craft. And he has inspired him to teach. Did you get that? He has inspired him to teach both him and Aholahad, the son of Ahishamak, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill. He has filled them with skill to do every sort of work done by an engraver, or by a designer, or by an embroiderer, in blue, purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen, or by a weaver, by any sort of workman 
or skilled designer. Chapter 36. Bezalel and Aholahab and every craftsman in whom the Lord has put skill and intelligence to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary shall work in accordance with all that the Lord has commanded. And Moses called Bezalel and Aholahab and every craftsman in whose mind the Lord had put skill, in whose mind the Lord had put skill, everyone whose art stirred him up to come to do the work. Wow. Wow. You see, the first time he's telling it to Moses, this time, the second time, Moses is telling it to the people. Oh God, please breathe the breath of your word in us tonight. God, please breathe the breath of your word in us tonight. It is a very interesting first introduction into the filling of the Spirit. It comes with skill, intelligence, knowledge, all kinds of craftsmen for devising all manner of design. So we are looking at the artistic and creative side of the Holy Spirit of the living God. And you know what? If we really decided to receive what we are talking about tonight, our effectiveness in what we are called to do and in the person we are called to be would explode by way of the Spirit. If we would receive that, What if we changed our vain imaginations for some gain imaginations? What if we changed our vain imaginations for some gain imaginations? What would happen if God came and overtook people just like this and began to show us what he could do? if he began to unearth all sorts of creativity and artistry in us. Point one, God's spirit is creative and original. God's spirit is creative and original. Filling me, I have creativity and originality within that I can never possess without him. Amazing. Just amazing. There's a very big difference between being created by God and being invaded by God. If we would take God up in this, He would transform our daily lives and productivity. Matthew 5.13 says that we are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. We have the force of the Holy Spirit in our very being. I think I need to say that again. We have the force of the Holy Spirit in our very being. So point two is this. This is the question on the table before us. This is the question on the table before us. What would happen if I or you cooperated with God and let him increasingly and intermittently unearth and infuse my creativity? Intermittently. There's a difference between a spurt and an IV drip. There's a difference between having a spurt of the Spirit and having an IV drip of the Spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying to you tonight? You and I have been created in the image of God and God's Holy Spirit is inside of us. It asks to be God. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Welcome Him. Do not turn Him away. The Scripture says, don't quench the Spirit. Don't quench the Spirit. It asks to be God. Welcome the Holy Spirit. 
So we can begin to see that we have a creative outlet in all sorts of areas in our lives where the Holy Spirit comes and brings color, texture, artistry, and creativity. Let me just reread Exodus 31 and 4 again. To devise artistic designs to work in gold, silver, and bronze. To devise artistic designs. The Net Bible Notes, that's the New English, Transla New English Translation. The Net Bible Notes, the expression is to devise devices. And that, that word devise is a verbal form. One, weave. We see the word weave there, weave, which is the Hebrew word ozev. It means to weave. It means to value, esteem, to consider, to think, to reckon. To join together, weave is postulated as the basic meaning of the root HSB. And one may base this fundamental meaning on Oseb, used as a professional designation weaver. So God is going to skill Bezalel, and He's going to anoint him to be able to literally weave something together that is after a design that God Himself is going to give. Artistic designs, the Hebrew word, Mahashabah, which means a feminine, it's a feminine noun, meaning a thought, a purpose, a device, an intention, largely poetic in its use. This Hebrew word means thought or the inventions that spring from such thoughts. It denotes the thoughts of the mind, either belonging to people or God, the plans or intentions that arise from these thoughts, the schemes of a wicked art, skillful inventions coming from the mind of an artist. All of that, it can mean all of that in different, in, in different portions of Scripture. Let me read you Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah 29, and, and we, we're all familiar with this this um, passage of scripture. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. God says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. All your heart. When you seek me with all your heart, that's when you will find me. That's when you will find me. Verse 11, he says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. Hello, Eulene. Good to see you tonight. That should really tell us something. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, God says. So when God called Bezalel and filled him with his spirit, he was going to enable him to think certain thoughts. And they would just play out in action. God was going to give him imaginations that would then come to fruition through the working he had called him to do. Wow. Wow. Hmm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to take you back to Jeremiah 29, 11 and read this again and include verse 14. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and hope. 
Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Wow. Wow. So we see that God as artistry and God as creativity in the way he plans someone's future. Let me repeat that again. God as artistry and creativity in the way he plans someone's future. He knows how he is going to use everything you've been through. He knows that. He knows how he is going to... This is, this is just amazing. He knows how he is going to use everything you have been through. He knows how everything is going to plan out. This is a God who knows the end from the beginning. We serve a God who knows the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. I'm so glad he has me in the palm of his hand. And no one can take me out. Point three, the full expression of creativity requires energy. The full expression of creativity requires energy. The Spirit of God gives us the creative thoughts. That's where they come from. But he also gives us the ability to craft it. Creativity and artistry do not evaporate with age. Oh no, you cannot come up with that in the scriptures. You cannot come up with that in the scriptures. Many of us get less willing for a filling. Oh, I hope somebody, some, somebody please, I, I, I want somebody to get that. Many of, uh, many of us get less willing for a filling. There is a certain inconvenience to creativity. The older we get, the more structured we want to get about when something can happen. We start structuring our creativity because we are less willing to be inconvenienced by creativity. We are getting less creative because it's getting less and less convenient. This is not about age. It is about the Holy Spirit's anointing. This is not about age. It is about the Holy Spirit's anointing. Let the young inspire you, not retire you. Life without creativity takes on monotony. If we choose a life without creativity, we are choosing a routine and boredom. And boy, do we have a lot of Christians like that right now while we're living in these times. It's just a routine and a boredom. What if we got some color on the palette? You understand what I'm saying? What if we let God invade us with his creativity and his artistry and, and bring out all of the colors? Spiritual colors in us. What if we got some color on the palette? I want to go back to Exodus 35. Exodus 35. And read verses 34 and 35. It says, And Eus inspired him to teach both him and Aholahab, the son of Aishamach, of the tribe of Dan. Eus filled them with skill. Fill them with skill the, to do every sort of work done by an engraver or by a designer or by an embroiderer in blue, purple, and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen or by a weaver, by any sort of workman or skilled designer. Do you see the colors there? Blue, purple, scarlet yarns. God has infiltrated their person 
with the ability to teach. He is gifted Bezalel by the Holy Spirit to teach. What can often be true, not always is, is that the more creative we are, the less willing we are for someone to tell us what to do. People, people cannot train you to be creative, but they can help train you to know what to do with your creativity. If we do not let ourselves be taught, there is a natural part of the process in being taught where there is constructive criticism. What very often happens, why people never see your creativity, is because you cannot take any criticism. The more creative we are, the less cooperative we are. People just completely shut down. They just completely shut down. What we do then is we have so pulled ourselves out of any kind of construction that we cannot take it when it comes. And sometimes the most ingenious among us will never see their creativity come to full fruition because they will never open their ideas to the less ingenious. Even when we don't like what we're taught, we're at least having to think about what Think about why we don't like it. Let me say that again. Even when we don't like what we're taught, we're at least having to think about why we don't like it. Hello, Pansy. Good to see you. So creativity minus, creativity minus discipline equals unrealized potential. I want you to get that. Let me repeat that again. Creativity minus discipline equals unrealized potential. At some point, creativity has got to be disciplined enough to come out in activity. And when it does, you have creativity and discipline which equals craftsmanship. There you have it. Creativity plus discipline equals craftsmanship. So creativity has to somehow take on some discipline that turns to craftsmanship, that brings it to activity. The Holy Spirit works over the chaos and brings order out of it. Remember Genesis 1 and 2. Colossians 1.29 states, for this, toil I, for, this, for this I toil, struggling with all his energy, that he powerfully works with me. Colossians 1.29, for this I toil, struggling with all his energy, that he powerfully works with me. Never think for a second to be spirit-filled and to do a spirit-filled work, that it would take absolutely no work from us. It's not true. It's not true. Just because you are struggling with something does not mean the Spirit of God is not in it. Let me read you Philippians 3. Philippians 3, verses 12 through 14. Paul says, not that, I have, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect. Did you get that? This is, this is the Apostle Paul. He said, Philippians 3, 12, 12 through 14. Paul says, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect. But I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Woo. I, mm. I just feel, I feel the Holy Spirit so strong all, all over me now. Easier, easier. 
He's made his presence known. He's made his presence known. I'll read you another scripture, Mark 16, 19 and 20. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. It says, and they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. So all God wants is just every bit of you. Bring in the whole thing. You get in exchange the whole thing. It seems that we're having a bit of a problem here um, with our internet connection. I, I don't know what's going on. Monday night this happened, the same thing. But if anybody's there, let me know if you can see me. Okay, good. Hi, Shirley, good to see you. We seem to be having a internet problem here. The same thing Monday night. Um, so let me read um, Mark 16, 19, and 20 again. Let me read that again. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and, set, and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. So all God wants is just every bit of you. Bring in the whole thing. You get in exchange the old thing. You get an exchange the old thing. Exodus thirty six thirteen. It says, And he had made fifty clasps of gold, and coupled the curtains one to the other with clasps, so the tabernacle was a single whole. The tabernacle was a single whole. A single whole. You see, the reason why we don't see a really wild work of God in our lives 
is that we don't realize that it took many different pieces for it to come together. Whatever God has called you to do, you cannot do it by yourself. There are other people that are going to be involved in it. If you are into auto autonomy, you will not fulfill your ministry. Autonomy. If you are into autonomy, you will not fulfill your ministry. You will not. It takes the body working together. Jesus is going to use other people to input and output in your ministry. So point four, we see the full expression of creativity requires rest. The full expression of creativity requires rest. Indeed it does. Let's go back to Exodus 30. Let's go back to Exodus 31. Let's go back to Exodus 31, verse 12. Yes, that is very true, Pansy. Satan uses a person's past to cripple them. That's why Paul said, press on. Yes, okay. Thank you for letting me know that you're seeing me. Okay. And the Lord said to Moses, Exodus 30, 31, verse 12, And the Lord said to Moses, You are to speak to the people of Israel and say, Above all, you shall keep my Sabbaths. For this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath again, because it is holy for you. Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever does any work on it, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall be put to death. Therefore, the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a covenant forever. It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And let's pick up now. We're going to pick up now. 12 to 18, actually. We're going to pick up now. Was refreshed. Okay, verse 18. This is... This is um, Verse 31, verse 18. And he gave to Moses when he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai the two tablets of testimony, tablets of stone, written with the finger of God. Chapter 35. Moses assembled all the congregation of the people of Israel and said to them, These are the things that the Lord has commanded you to do. Six days' work shall be done, but on the seventh day you shall have a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire in all your dwelling places on the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath day. It is not accident to the fact that Sabbath regulations are given right next to the work going from a mind into action, from thoughts into creativity, into actual construction, that there has got to be some rest. Let me read you Exodus 31, 17 again. Moses said, It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So on the seventh day he rested, Sabbat, and was refreshed, the Hebrew word napas. N-A-P-A-S. The word means to take breath, to refresh oneself. It is basically saying God took a breather. That's what it's basically saying. God took a breather. And both times it is mentioned in the construction of the actual tabernacle, where it is, where, where it is told it's going to be taken from creativity all the way to the completion of it. Both times it is framed around the Sabbath. Both times 
It is framed around the Sabbath. There will have to be rest for there to be creativity in the work. If we never let our minds rest, we will never tap into the deep part of our creativity that God would bring forth by His Spirit. We will never have the same artistry in creativity if we fill up every single thought with noise. There has to be rest. And point five, nothing cheats our creativity of its sacredness and true spirituality like a pervasive feeling of unworthiness. Nothing cheats our creativity of its sacredness and true spirituality like a pervasive feeling of unworthiness. That's a powerful statement. Very powerful statement. And we're going to go to Exodus 32. And then we're going to go back to Exodus 35. So let's go to Exodus 32, verses 1 through 4. It says, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up! Make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. So the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. Wow. Isn't that something? The people of Israel turned to idolatry. Right then and there. I, what I, I, I find very interesting, um, if you go down further, when Moses comes down from the mountain and he, 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 he asks Aaron, you know, how does, uh, what, what have you done? How did, how did all this come to be? And Aaron says, well, I just throwed all of these, um, the, the gold into the, 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 um, the oven or the furnace and out popped that golden calf. It just shriek, came right out. <laughs> my, my, my. Wow. Idolatry. Okay, let's go to Chapter 35, Exodus 35, verse 4. Moses said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, This is the thing that the Lord has commanded. Take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Whoever is of a generous heart, let him bring the Lord's contribution. contribution. Gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twine linen, goat's hair, tanned ram skins and goat skins, acacia wood, Oil, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones and stones for setting for the ephod, for the breastplate. Then all the congregation of the people of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him and everyone whose spirit moved him and brought the Lord's contribution to be used for the tent of meeting and for all its service, and for all the holy garments. So they came both men and women, all who were of a willing art. All who were of a willing art. Brought brooches and earrings and signet rings and armlets, all sorts of gold objects, every man dedicating an offering of gold to the Lord. You see, in Exodus 32, their first contribution was to idolatry. In Exodus 35, their second contributions are to God. Let me pick up reading back in, in 35. 
Oh, I did read all of it. Okay, I thought I missed some out. Their first contribution was to idolatry in Exodus 32. Their second contributions are to God in Exodus 35. So let's go to Exodus 36, verses 2 to 7. And Moses called Bezalel and Aholahad, and every craftsman in whose mind the Lord had put skill, everyone whose heart stirred him up to come to do the work. And they received from Moses all the contribution that the people of Israel had brought for doing the work on the sanctuary. They still kept bringing in free will offerings every morning. Free will offerings. So that all the craftsmen who were doing every sort of task on the sanctuary came, each from the task that he was doing, and said to Moses, The people bring much more than enough for doing the work that the Lord has commanded us to do. So Moses gave command, and word was proclaimed throughout the camp, Let no man or woman do anything more for the contribution for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing for the material they add was sufficient to do all the work and more. The material they add was sufficient to do all the work and more. This is the redemption of the contribution. Bring it. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? This is the redemption of the contribution. Bring it. Bring it. Exodus 36 and 2. And we'll conclude with this. And Moses called Bezalel and Aholahab and every craftsman, in whose mind the Lord had put skill, and everyone whose heart stirred him up to come to do the work. Wow. Sometimes our creativity follows our heart. Maybe you feel like your heart was in it, but it's gone. What if God gave us back our heart for our work tonight? What if God gave us back our heart for our work tonight? tonight. What if? I've got chill bumps all over me. Because you know what? No one can do it for us. No one can do for us what the Holy Spirit can. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. No one can do for us what the Holy Spirit can. We need the filling of the Holy Spirit in us. There's a very big difference between being created by God and being invaded by God. Very big difference. A very big difference. We have to be filled with the Spirit in order for God to carry out the work in us that He has called us to do. Listen to me, people. Listen. We have to. You see the turbulent times we're living in. And right smack dab in the end times. You know, something happened the other night, or I think it was the morning. I was praying, and I can't remember what I was praying about. But it was like very intense. I was intense. Praise you, Lord. I can't remember what I was praying about. But I was, it was very intense. And out of my mouth 
became one phrase in tongues, spiritual tongues. And at that time, I truly believe that the Holy Spirit interceded for me with groanings that cannot be uttered. As it says, I really believe it was so intense. We need the filling of the Spirit in us. We need to let God invade us by His Holy Spirit. You see, in this day and time, we have too much churchianity in churches, too much ritualistic going through the motions, too much ritualistic traditions. We try to put God in a box and clamp Him down like that. You'll never be able to do that. Why not let God fill you with His Spirit? Filling with His Spirit comes in spending time with God in His Word. And I don't mean just five minutes. I cannot live on a five minute devotional. I cannot. Now don't get me wrong, devotionals are very good. I have, I have quite a few of them, but I need more. I need more. I need in-depth Bible teaching. I need a deep study of the Word of God. I need to let God sometimes sit still and let Him speak to me. And I'm asking Him all the time, give me more of a love for Your Word. Fill me more with Your Holy Spirit. We're going to need it, beloved. We are going to need it. Because the times are going to only intensify and intensify and intensify and intensify until the return of Jesus Christ comes. The closer it gets, we are going to have to stand on the truth of the Word of God and speak the truth of the Word of God out no matter, come what may. No matter. If you get ridiculed, if you get call called all kinds of names, even if you get beat up for speaking the truth of the Word of God out, speak it, speak it. Great will be your reward in heaven. Jesus said, for so they persecuted the prophets before you. One more thing. We must demonstrate the love and compassion of Christ to others. Remember that scripture? Love your neighbor as yourself. Everywhere we go, we should be a walking testimony for Jesus Christ. People should see the love of God reflected through our lives. They should be able to tell whether we belong to Christ or not. Good to see you, Donna. Good to see you, Stacy. So we see in Scripture for the very first time in Exodus 31, that an, in it, that an individual by name as something happened to him called the filling of the Spirit. God filled the Azalel with his Spirit. Bezalel. That must have been really something. That must have been really something. He filled Bezalel with his spirit. Wow. Praise you, Lord. And we've saw tonight that God's spirit is creative and original. Creative and original. And we've saw that the full expression of creativity 
requires energy. And we saw that the full expression of creativity requires rest. So, what if God gave us back our heart for our work today? What if? What if? No one can do it for us. No one can do for us what the Holy Spirit can. No one. No one. No one. If God is going to work through us, we need to be filled with the Spirit. To overflowing. To overflowing. Remember that Samaritan woman at the well? Jesus said, if you knew who I were, you would ask for living water. Living God, I thank you for this teaching tonight. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I can't say it enough. I can't say it enough. Hallelujah. Praise you. Fill us with your Spirit. Invade us with your Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit residing inside of us. But it's a different thing to be filled with your Spirit. Invade us with your Holy Spirit. Let us ask for you to do that. I'm asking for you to do that for all of us. Let your Holy Spirit penetrate our entire being to the very core of our entire being, every area of our entire being in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Your word says we are to walk by the Spirit and not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. To your glory and for your glory. Amen. 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 To the glory of God. To the glory of God. No one can do for us what the Holy Spirit can. Ask Him, my brothers and sisters. Ask God to invade you with his Holy Spirit. Ask him. Ask him. He will do it. He will do it if you sincerely ask him and, and in, in humility and reverence. He'll do it. He'll do it. Thank you for being here with me tonight. I'll meet you back again on Monday night. Monday night coming. And boy, is that going to be something. I would not advise you to miss Monday night because <laughs> that is, is really going to be something, Monday night. I'll give you a hint. Samson and Delilah. You remember the Spirit of the Lord came on Samson. Very, very interesting and fascinating teaching Monday night. So I'm going to leave you with this one phrase. No one can do for us what the Holy Spirit can. No one. No one. No one. Ask Him to invade you. Ask God to invade you with this Holy Spirit. I cannot say it enough. Ask Him. Ask Him to let His Holy Spirit permeate the entire core of your very being. And he, he will do it. He will do it. God bless you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless you.
and have a good night. Until Monday. Until Monday. Go in peace. Go in the love of God. In Jesus' name. Amen.